Hi guys, my name is Emmanuel. Welcome to the third video of this tutorial series. Today I'm going to be teaching you about the iOS application lifecycle. I've been asked this question a couple of times in iOS interviews, so I believe it's something worth knowing. At every point in time, your application is in one of five states. The first is the not running state. And as it sounds, it means that your application is not running, it's not executing any code, it's not even in memory. Now, whenever you click on your application, it goes directly to the inactive state, which is where your application is running in foreground, but it does not receive any events. Now, from here, it goes into your active state, which is what we are aware of. You can actually interact with your application here. You can click on buttons, move to different pages. So basically, it's executing code and it's receiving events. Now, imagine a scenario where from our foreground, we receive a phone call. So what happens is your application goes directly into the inactive state, still in foreground, and the moment you're done with the call, your application returns to the active state. Now, we've been on Facebook for quite a while, and uh, I feel like I want to play some game. Whenever I click on my home button, the application goes directly to the inactive state and then falls into our background. In our background, the application still is executing code, and depending on the kind of code it's executing, it can remain in the background for quite a while. So imagine that we are actually playing music and um, in background the music is still playing. So the application is going to remain in this stage for quite a while. But if we aren't doing anything in the background, after some time your application is going to go directly to the suspended state. At this point, your application is not executing any code, it's just in memory. If for any reason or the other, your system needs to free up some space for other applications that are running in foreground or background, your application will probably be moved to the not running state. Okay? But while in the suspended state, it's possible for us to return to our foreground. If we click on the application again, it's going to go from the suspended state back to the background, then to the inactive state, and then active again. Now, there's also situations where our applications go directly from our not running state to the background state and back. So imagine that um, we schedule a background fetch for every one hour. So it's possible for our application to be in the not running state. And whenever it gets to the one hour mark, it's going to trigger a fetch to our API or whatever, and then run in the background. When it's done, it returns to the not running state. So yeah, that's the scenario. In order to improve user experience or even the performance of the application, we might want to know or be informed whenever the application switches between states. Now, thankfully it's possible because iOS actually provides us with a couple of um, protocols that are being triggered whenever the application changes states. And we're gonna discuss that shortly. But before then, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please just take a second to click on the subscribe button and then turn on notification. Great. So first we have will finish launching with options. And at this point, the launch process has begun, but the state has near been restored. We also have his correspondent did finish launching with options where the state has been restored, but um, the UI has not yet been presented to the user. Now, in either of these uh, methods, we could decide to perform things like um, um, configurations or initializations. For example, if we wanted to set up push notifications, we could do that here. Next, we have scene will enter foreground. And this method is actually executed just before a scene transitions from the background to the foreground. And one thing to note is that this method is executed whether the scene is newly created or is resuming from the background, right? So it's executed either way. Next, we have our scene did become active, which is executed when our scene becomes active. And things we'd like to do here is uh, like start tasks that we have not started or probably resume tasks that were suspended due to entering the background. Now let's move on to our termination flow. So as you can see, first we have the scene will resign active. This method is actually executed just before the scene transitions from being active to inactive. This usually occurs when um, there's slight interruption in the application. So for example, if we receive a phone call, this method is gonna be triggered, okay? Next we have scene did enter background and this method is executed 
when the application goes into the background state right and um, usually at this point what we'd want to do is save data or free up shared resources so we just want to make sure that whenever we come back to the application we have everything we need to give good user experience and finally we have application will terminate and this method is executed just before our application goes to rest and uh, that's basically it there's a whole lot more delegates that are available for us so um, as we continue down the line I'm sure we're gonna uncover some of the delegates that we're gonna need but for the meantime these should do okay now if you have questions or concerns please leave them in the comment section if you like the video please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe turn on the notification bell as well see you guys in the next video